There is definitely no patient named Judy Grant, not even a referral. You know, maybe the pharmacy got the doctor wrong. Did they say who called it in? Someone gave my name, but it wasn't me, I swear. Oh, great. It's, it's okay. Uh, Tracy, did they, did they give a date? Oh, June 14th. Want me to pull all your appointments from that day? No. Um, I'll, I'll call the pharmacy myself and straighten it all out. Let me know how it turns out. Yeah. Fourteen. Does that date mean something to you? Remember I told you Rachel failed one of her classes? Well, the fourteenth was the day that she got her grades back. She was a basket case. That doesn't mean Rachel was hitting No, there. Rachel was right here at my desk when she opened her grades. She was real upset. I had to run out to check on a surgical patient and left her here alone. She could have called the pharmacy, used my DEA number. You really think Rachel would go that far? You know, I don't know. I don't know what Rachel would do. I... Where are you calling? Pharmacy. See if their Judy Grant looks anything like Rachel Gannon. I know, Ricky, listen to me. I, I know that you've worked hard this, this last semester. I mean, you, you practically lived at the law library. So talk to me, sweetheart. I mean, what, did you sleep through the finals or, or what? No, you gave me that alarm clock when I missed moot court, remember? Well, then there's got to be some kind of an explanation why you, you, you failed this course. Because, baby, I know how smart you are. Maybe I'm not as smart as you think, Daddy. Maybe I just can't cut law school. Why don't we just admit I can't hack it? <laughs> no way. That is not true. And don't you go giving up just because of one little setback. Yeah, one little setback. Ricky, do you remember being on the speech team in school? Yeah, when I didn't make it to nationals and policy debate, you and Mom almost had a fit. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about the oratorical tournament. When you gave Dr. King's I have a dream speech. Dad, that was in junior high. Yeah, that's right. And you know what? That was one of your first contests. And you were, I mean, you were so scared. You just, you just kept saying, Dad, I can't do it. And what did I say? There's no such thing as can't. Right. And I took you to the courthouse every night to rehearse. And I had you stand and look at yourself in the mirror. And I made you say, yes, I can. A hundred times. That's right. And the day of the tournament, you were shaking from head to toe. What did I tell you? Make Daddy proud, Ricky. Right. And you know what? That's exactly what you did. You came home with that first prize trophy and a grin as wide as the Grand Canyon. <laughs> so you see, when you... When you put your mind to doing something, you can accomplish anything. Daddy, you want you want something cool to drink? Uh, yeah, actually, that'd be nice. What do you have? Well, I have that iced tea you like. It's okay. in the fridge. All right. Oh, it's like that, huh? Self-service around this joint. All right. Can I get you something? No, I'm fine. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lose it like that. I just, um... Uh... Uh, no, no, it's okay. <coughs> mm. Thanks. Look, when my mom got up her way, I... I blamed myself for breaking that stupid lamp, remember? <laughs> yeah. I just never should have gotten involved with Dorian. I mean, my mom had enough problems. Well, you said you loved Aunt Dorian, right? The only reason that she was with me was to get back at Mom. And the whole time that she was with me, she was doing it with the guy that got her off death row, Uncle David. 
I mean, I'm cooking her pasta every night saying, Te amo, cara, and she is getting ready to fly off to Spain with David Vickers. I can't believe Aunt Dorian would have done that to you deliberately. She was never even serious about the guy. I mean, their marriage lasted, what, five minutes, right? Actually, longer. Aunt Dorian and David are back together. As together as they get. They have a very open relationship. What do you mean? I probably shouldn't be telling you this. They have separate bedrooms. What's up with that? I don't think that you, you know, want to know. Uh, no, maybe not. I'll tell you one thing. There's definitely something very weird going on with those two. No, Joey, you don't get it. See, Aunt Doreen and David's relationship isn't all that weird. They're just very sophisticated. You know, uh, they're not your typical bourgeois American couple. Andrew and Cassie, I mean, they won't die of old age. They'll just bore each other to death. At least Aunt Doreen and David, you know, they know how to live. They have a very European marriage. Uh, Europeans sleep together, Kelly. They probably have separate bedrooms so they can have their affairs. Do Dorian and David fight a lot? <laughs> yeah. I've walked into some real free-for-alls, but, you know, they start kissing. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like a lot. Heavy duty, they could take their lips off, but it's just... I don't know, maybe sometimes they do do it. Joey, ready for lunch? Hey. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Listen, um, I have to go change for the party. I hope your mom gets better soon, Julian. If you ever want to, like, hang out or anything, just give me a call. Thanks. Okay. Oh, could we have some iced tea and a couple menus? Dad. What did you mean last night when you said that Dorian was involved with mom's breakdown? I went to question Dorian. And I think I finally got the truth out of her. Part of it, anyway. And what'd she say? Well, a few months back, the whole time Dorian was missing, she wasn't in Spain with David Vickers. She was being held hostage by your mother. What? Blair? Where's Dorian? Well, she's not here yet, Mama. But it's her birthday party. She can't miss it. Well, her party hasn't started yet, but she's going to be here. Don't you worry. Look, Blair. What? Look what I did for Dorian. See, Blair, it's our family. It's Dorian and me and Melinda. Well, that's wonderful, Mama. I tell you what, we'll wrap it up very pretty for Dorian, okay? Could we wrap this one up, too, okay. please, Blair? See, Blair... This is for your baby when he's born. See, this is you, Blair, holding your little boy. Mama. I lost that baby, remember? Uh, I get so confused. You lost the baby. And that was after it was real. When you when you got married to Todd, it was just a pretend baby, like the pretend baby you had with Asa, the one you pretended to lose. But this baby you really lost. I'm so sorry, Mom. Blair. It's all right. But let's not mention the pretend baby, to, especially to Todd, because it's our little secret, okay? I don't want you to ever tell anyone about the pretend baby, all right? You promise me? Cross my heart. I won't tell anybody about the B A B Y. Okay. I'm Luna, and this is the Love Line, and I'm going to be taking your calls and giving advice on how to be patient when your lover lets you down. But the first way to mend that hurt in your heart is to put on some slow moving love music. Yes, sirree. And if you want to send a message, to somebody special? You always have Luna's love line to put your heart's desire on the air. So, just... What the hell do you think you're doing? Who do you think you are? 
your new boss. I just bought the station. And guess what? As of right now, you and your pathetic love line are history. You're fired. One Life to Live will continue in a moment here on ABC. I said you're fired. Now beat it. You can't do this in the middle of... I'm going to play some more music. It's already been taken care of. You have been preempted. Permanently. Oh. Todd, people call the love line for hope and A bunch advice. of losers telling sob stories to obnoxious country music. I hate it. I'm going to give the station more edge. Hard-hitting talk radio. No more of this hearts and flowers crap. Are you... Are you doing this to get back at me? Because I put that scar on your face. That's why you're doing this. This has got nothing to do with what happened back then. I don't blame you for me messing up. Then why are you doing this to me? Blair, did Blair put you up to this? No, I, I just want to take the station in a different direction. This is just business, that's all. Yeah, well, it stinks. <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least finish the show. I'm going to say a proper no, sign-off so my team. you can slam me on the air, forget about it. Show's over. Now get out. Well, let me just take my belongings out of here. Oh, go right ahead. Suit yourself. pharmacy remembers Judy Grant because she was nervous and in a rush and her description fits Rachel to a T. Are you sure? Uh, she must be hooked if she's taking this kind of risk. Great. <sighs> ben, look, there's a way out of this. You've just got to believe that. <sighs> oh, I just wish she didn't have to give up that fellowship to London. Look. No, I know she needs you. I'm scared for her, Sheila. We've both seen what drugs can do to people's lives. They can ruin them, yep. their families, their relationships. It doesn't have to be like that. You can get her into a program. <sighs> um, Narcotics Anonymous meets right here at the hospital. And look, whatever you and Rachel need, you know Hank and I will be there. Well, not a word of this to Hank. You promised. Then you are putting me in a terrible position. After all this stuff with RJ? I mean, I promised Hank I I'm would not... I'm not saying that Hank will never find out. I'm just saying that when he finally hears the truth, he should hear it from Rachel. I suppose. Can I trust you on this, Sheila? Okay, I won't tell him. But you have... Look, this can't go on long. Hey, believe me, it won't. Where are you going? I'm going home with Rachel. Listen, Ricky, I, um, I hope you weren't serious before. You know, you know, what you said about not being able to cut it in law. Because, baby, you've got what it takes. I know you do. I guess the self-confidence gene is recessive. I didn't get it. Hey, come on, I know how you feel. Daddy, no, don't say you know how I feel, because you don't. You never had to retake a course you flunked. All right, maybe not. Look, here, have a seat. Come on, sit down. But baby, listen to me. I felt the same pressure. I mean, you know, like in, in football. You, you get out there on the field and you take a lot of hits. You know, and it knocks the wind out of you. And believe me, it hurts. But you tough it out. 
And you just get back in there and you get ready for the next play. This isn't football, Daddy. Of course not. Listen, Rachel, I, I know that your, your mom and I have been pretty tough on you. We, we pushed you pretty hard. But that's because we know you've got what it takes. Hey, remember? Look, I won't fumble again. Hey, you. I love you. I love you, too. Bye. Bye. baby, Kelly, my mother's been worried about me, and I was just explaining to her that it's, it's something that I don't want to talk about right now. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's cool. Mama, you remember Kelly, don't you? Melinda. No, Kelly. <laughs> See, I got it right. That's good, Mama. And Kelly, you better go change your clothes because this party is about to begin any minute. Yeah, I was just about to do that. Good, later. <laughs> See, Blair, I didn't say a word to Kelly about the pretend baby. That's very good, Mama. And there's something else that I want you to do. I want you to be extra nice to my husband. You remember Todd. I don't like him, Blair. He's bad. No, Mama, Todd is not bad. He scares me. His eyes are mean. Mama, Todd is not mean or scary. Okay? He's really nice. In fact, he's doing me a great big favor right this very minute just to make me happy. But you don't love him, Blair. You love Cord. Mama, look, let's not talk about that either, okay? Look, I may not... I may not love Todd, but I care about him a great deal, even more than I ever thought that I would. Do you understand? So come on, let's go wrap up this gift for Aunt Dorian, okay? What you're saying is, Mom took Dorian prisoner? It happened last January. That night that Vicky's car skidded off the road. She was in pretty bad shape, but she managed to get over to Dorian's house. And she confronted Dorian. Now, according to Dorian, well, Dorian asked your mother to leave. In fact, she told her to get out. When your mother got upset, she got very upset. And one of the other personalities took over. And she pushed Dorian down the steps and knocked her colder than a wedge. A to that? And then another personality, Jean Randolph, took over. She got rid of any evidence of a struggle and made it look like Dorian had left the country. With her lover, David Vickers, only he wasn't her lover. Yeah, well, Dorian says that when she finally came to, she was chained up in the root cellar up at Vicky's Mountain Cabin. Jean held her there until the renovations in the secret room at Landfair were finished, and then she moved her. That's why you found Dorian's clothes and her compact down there. Un unbelievable. Uh, what could have happened to Mom to drive her over the edge like that to make her do that to Dorian? Well, Joey, don't forget your mother was very disturbed. We know how she feels about Dorian. There's a lot of bad blood there. 
maybe one of her other personalities was just, you know, trying to punish her for your grandpa Victor's murder. Or for sleeping with her son. Now think about it, Dad. That was the perfect way to end our affair. I mean, I, I always thought that Mom had something to do with Dorian's disappearance. If Dorian didn't fly off to Spain, then maybe she didn't break up with me because she wanted to. Maybe she did it because she had to. should be in the dictionary next to lonely. Yeah, well, whose fault is that? Why? I let the perfect guy get away. Oh. Max, you need to sign these maintenance contracts. Yeah. Hey, Tina, what's with the crate? New gym equipment, which we obviously need. And don't worry, it won't cost you a penny. We got on a special trial offer. No kidding. That's great. So, what are you two doing? Sitting around trying to cook up another crooked deal? Now, Tina, I heard about that little scam that you and Max ran. Trying to make Melador look like it causes allergic reactions. I was surprised, Tina. That was really low. See how he still stands up for that she-wolf? I'm telling you, if she gets her claws into him again, I'm really gonna do something low. He still means a lot to you, doesn't he? I married him three times, didn't I? Besides being the father of my children, he's an anchor in my life. You know something, Tina? Maybe what Cord needs right now is an anchor in his life. You know, somebody to keep him from getting mixed up with Blair. Max, you gotta sign this last page. Hey, Cord, I'm, I'm sorry. I hate it when you're mad at me. Do you think maybe we can go somewhere and just work this out? Like, say, how about a quiet dinner at the country club? Ten. That's okay. I don't have to use it in my auto time. I'll be fine. Ben, what are you doing home so soon? Strange phone call at the hospital today. Really? What about? Well, somebody using my name called Medical Arts Pharmacy with a prescription for a Dex loan for a Judy Grant. Whoever it was used my DEA number. Now, of course, uh, I never sent in a script, so the pharmacy called to remind me. The trouble is, I have no record of a Judy Grant. So I thought maybe you could uh, help me out here, Rachel. How? Let's be honest with each other, okay? I think we both know who Judy Grant is. Don't we? Joey, I know this is hard to accept. But I think it's pretty obvious that Dorian's feelings for you were never sincere. Dad, she was definitely lying to me. I know that. But maybe she wasn't lying when she said that she loved me. Maybe she's been lying since she got back, since Mom let her go. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to burst your little bubble here, but she told me point blank that she had been planning to go to Spain to be with David Vickers long before Vicky kidnapped her. Oh, I'm sorry, Joey, but... <laughs> I think you just have to face the fact that Dorian was using you all along. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, thanks for letting me know. Yeah. Well, I have to get back to the banner. You need a lift? No, I'm going to hang out here for a while. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, it's all a little weird. That's all. I know it's a lot to deal with. Look, your mother gets into therapy, and, uh, well, maybe she'll be able to clear this up and answer some questions. I sure hope so. Take care. Thanks, Ted. There's got to be more to it. Okay, Neil, you just keep the bubbly coming and don't let it run out, all right? Very good, Mrs. Manning. <laughs> we are having a party. 
one. Hello. Hello. Can I at least have a glass of champagne? I mean, this is a special occasion, right? Okay, I will give you a little glass of champagne. If you're discreet. I'm always discreet. That's why married men love me. <laughs> mm. Oh, you made it! Mama, say hi to Todd. Hello, Todd. Blair says that she likes you, so I want to like you, too. That's great. Got good news. What did she say? <laughs> what could she say? She's dead meat. <laughs> thank you, Todd. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mmm. Frank, Leslie, just keep on sleeping. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be on the air. WVL was sold. And guess who bought it? Todd Manning. <laughs> Todd bought WVL? Yes, he, he canceled the love line and he fired me. And he said that he wouldn't even give me a chance to sign off to the fans. And he, he told me he's going to take the show in a whole new direction. And... I just know he's trying to pay me back because of what I did to him, and I just don't so mad I can sh I can spit. It's not Todd's doing. This is he's just a hatchet man. Blair is the one calling the shots here. She's looking to ruin us. Boy, is she gonna be sorry. I've never heard of this Judy person. I don't even know what her Look, problem is. I need you to be straight with me, Rachel. Are you high right now? Excuse me, Look, all right, we can what? deal with this, okay? I'm just worried about you, baby. I love you more than anything, and I want to help you, but you got to let me help you. You got to let me in. Now, come on, just give me the pills, please. I told you, I'm not taking any pills. And we both know that's not true. So where are they? In your purse? No. Oh, don't do this, okay? Let me see your purse. I will not let you search me like a police. So, uh, I guess that answers my question then, doesn't it? How will Sonny react when he learns that Brenda has betrayed him? Stay tuned for General Hospital, next. You're in danger. Will an act of deception... Brenda would not betray me. Destroy their love? What if he finds the wire? Sonny would never do anything to hurt me. Or threaten her life. General Hospital on ABC Daytime. An ABC News Brief. Now from New York, John Donvan. Good afternoon. The American Medical Association today accused the tobacco industry of deliberately covering up the cancer-causing effects of cigarettes for decades. In Bosnia, the UN says it's facing a humanitarian disaster. Thousands of Muslim refugees are converging on the city of Tuzla where there is almost no food or shelter. And a heat wave moving east across the U.S. has killed over a thousand head of cattle in the Midwest. More on World News Tonight with Peter Jennings.